I have ancient rainforest soil here from Canada, from Turtle Island. And I was really excited to look at it. It's, it's Fairy Creek is where it's from. It's from near a creek. So there's some attributes to it that like immediately were like hallmarks of like, you know, an ancient food forest. There's like great, you know, fungi. And it was obviously fungal dominant, but there's not very much bacteria. And then the behavior around the aggregates, the, the lack of humic release. I was like, well, this has got to be an area where there's perennial moisture, water logging. And, and it's an island, right? Right. It's next to a creek. But I noticed like there was a simplification of the soil food web of of the bacteria and the behavior of it kind of had hallmarks of in like uh, an oversprayed dairy that pasture that I had looked at and so you can see here you know it's like there's no humic re release see how it goes stays clear it's been sitting here for a while if I did this with Michael Stangle's compost as recomposted Johnson Sioux, it would be it would be chocolate milk. And so there's a lot of humic release, right? This is designed, you know, to handle the water arriving and going, arriving and going. That's why it's like this. Otherwise, it would just lose itself, you know, when when those heavier rains came. And so the island has to stay. But the behavior of the bacteria kind of set off my spidey sense or something. And I like looked it up and they have a huge problem with glyphosate and herbicide contamination on the island in the water and in the soil. And it looked like that oversprayed pasture. But yeah, it's so simplified. You just like go here and... You know, you have a lonely bacteria swimming right here. One there, one there, one there. It's super easy to count, but they're not interacted with each other. So there's no horizontal gene transfer happening. There's no adapt adaptability to this soil, right? So it, 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 it's rang some alarm bells for me. And I did look it up in the articles, you know, it's a big deal. And this is because glyphosate and other 2,4-D and other pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, they travel in the rain. Glyphosate chelates iron, copper, and aluminum and takes it up as a complex uh, into the atmosphere. And it disassociates when it encounters phosphorus, which in forests where there's lots of good fungi, you're going to have a lot of phosphorus released. And so that aluminum is going to build up and compound, uh, as will the glyphosate, because then it's reactivated. It's freed, and then it's active again. It's, it's a terrible thing. This, it can persist for over 20 years. So we have to do more to track, to protect, to monitor, and to hold accountable people spreading poisons through our water cycle and our in, in, in the rain into our food, onto our land. And we need to protect these spaces because we can see a lack of cycling. We can see a lack of life. We can see it immediately and, and know something's off here, you know? And that's the power of microscopy, but that's also the power of understanding microscopy. And... A lot of folks, you know, they, they wonder where my courses divide, you know, because I've got a microscopy course and I got a soil course. Which one should I take? The microscopy course is how to learn to use the microscope. It's the morphology for using the microscope and identifying microbes or non-definitively identifying them. So we're, we're like, it could be this, it could be that, it could be that, right? Because we know from DNA testing that you'll have something that looks like this and something that looks like that. And it'll be the same DNA, or you'll have something that looks exactly the same in different DNA. And it's the environment that drives their morphology. So we got to get really well versed in that. And we got to do some myth busting and expansion upon our comprehension of what is possible. And then we dive into classes where you're seeing me in long format, talking the whole time, explaining everything I'm doing, modeling. And then I do it quickly live, and then you do it live with me, and then you share your results in groups, 
and take people on a tour. You become like the teacher and you, know, you do some analysis and some interpretation and some suggestions right then in your groups. And then you rotate, do it again in your group, new group. Then you rotate again and do it in a third group. And you end up seeing over a dozen samples every single week of that theme. So it's like the first week is obviously soil. The next week is hot compost. Then it's vermicompost, Johnson Sioux, biofertilizers like EM, you know, like purple non-sulfur bacteria, you know, from hydrospace, pro, uh, you know, uh, PNS ProBio. These, these modalities, by focusing on them, you get to see these samples from all these different perspectives all over the world. It's really, really incredibly useful. But how do you interpret it all? That's the first course. That's what's starting on Monday. Regenerative soil is how you interpret and the actions. So it's the interpretations, the actions, and then all the pieces to put your plan together. So regenerative soil is essential for anyone that wants to learn the microscopy the way I teach it. Anyone who wants to understand these things at a higher level. It's the foundation for it all. So I really invite you guys to check out that course, especially if you're interested in microscopy, because it'll give you the foundation so that you can interpret and the actions so that you can use the tests. And that's the thing. It's like you'll be able to use the tests. You know what I mean? Regardless of whether you're doing the microscopy or someone, your friend is doing the microscopy or, or, or a consultant. And so that's what's so powerful about this course. It starts Monday. We go through how soil is made. We go through the cycles. We go through all the minerals. We go through the plant physiology, the plant health pyramid, the redox, the chemistry. I make it understandable, not like your high school chemistry. We go to micro to macro. We make it hands-on. We make it pragmatic. And we, then we go through all the biology inside and outside the plant, on the plant surfaces, you know, the, the, the roots, mycorrhizal fungi. We cover the myco mycological side of all this. And so then we combine all that biology into actions in relation to problems. Like these are the microbes for in drought conditions. These are the microbes for high salinity conditions. And you recognize yourself in the course as you go through it you take notes i'm a big note taker and my students are too so so you take notes and you develop a menu and then you choose from that menu you make your plan and then you share your plan with me and i give you feedback and your certification so it's an and it's lifetime access so folks who do this and refine this and ask questions that are harder over 750 people are in this lifetime community you can be too you can start working with soil and folks are from all over the world from all different soil types so you really get an understanding of how what will work for you is different from what will work for them which is incredibly important that people don't realize so many of the books that are written are one size fits all. I saw a comment, uh, someone was saying, everyone's always trying to reduce things to a marketing statement for their perspective. It's like, yeah, that's the problem. That is, they, you need a menu and you need to see yourself in the cycles. And so when we do that, it becomes obvious what you need to do. And people have these like epiphanies in my course. And in both courses, but primarily this course that starts Monday because it's how to connect the biophysics, the energy, the chemistry, the biology, and the plants, but in a pragmatic way and a hands-on way. And that's why gardeners love it, indoor growers love it, farmers love it, and folks at like huge scales love it because it works, because it's the principles of nature at work in our soil. And if you'd like to learn that sort of thing, join me in Regenerative Soil, which starts Monday. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And click that link, and I'll see you there.